a strange thing because you know most stories um uh, you know th there's uh there's that you know they call it the inciting incident and the inciting incident sort of kicks the character into gear and um uh we were sort of we were, we were playing with sort of a different model here where the um the protagonist because of the bubble he's in has to have this passive role there's no entry point for him to not be passive it's it's maddening what if you could travel into your own memories we take you your consciousness and we create a simulated version of yourself any memory you want it could be there all over again watching it unfold right in front of you it's a very ambitious script it's a very dense and complex script uh, when you just approach it from from production Point of view. I think it, 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 in watching it last night, it, it's it's very easy to follow. Uh, I, I you know give them tremendous credit for the editing because I, I found it very easy to kind of manage the story and the narrative. But during production, it was a challenge. It was a challenge to re, you know recall where exactly we are in the storyline. There's a lot of repetition that plays uh, plays a, a factor in in, in 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 Tom's you know logic and his, and in the way he executes things. Like the repetition of memories and and having to play that. Now the idea is you go into the memories of an accused man, see if he did the crime. It's unethical. It's an invasion of privacy. It's just a presentation, Mr. Jacobs. gonna do this one of the things that I really like about the dynamic is the Tom character everything he does is out of a place of intelligence and is out of a place of sort of he's he's kind of figuring things out constantly where the other character Anthony is sort of everywhere he comes from is a place of emotion just raw emotion and without thinking sometimes um, and so it was sort of interesting when those two crossed over how how they sort of got, you know, they, they sort of started to share their own characteristics. Process hard a bit. Maybe not for me. It's a wild ride up there. What's happening? You gotta get me out of here. Something's wrong with me. I loved the, the the metaphor of this man who's trapped within these memories and the memories of a man who's trapped within a prison. And it's like you, you, we're both in our own prisons and uh, and we're both looking for redemption, both looking for a way out. And um, it was it, it was difficult sometimes to to be kind of an observer in scenes, like to to sit there and imagine myself having seen something or experienced it hundreds if not thousands of times before and talking like the only company you have is this voice this sort of you know ubiquitous voice that just does not in the least satisfy him but it's all he's got you know and so you know trying to, to find a relationship with that computer trying to find a relationship with these memories and and try to keep sane and keep a sense of identity. Um, that was an interesting challenge. So I'm in the starting point, and I find the memory I want to go to, and I'm there. Simple as that. Yeah, simple as that. How far can you go inside the memory? As far as the memory will allow. Temporary borders pop up when you're at the memory's edge. A fence that you can't get past. You shouldn't have to, anyway. You know, a man who's been inside these memories hundreds if not thousands of times how does he deal with them what are they are they his now are they somebody else's where's that line you know that divide i mean it was it was a fascinating character and a fascinating circumstance that was i still think about it how how would someone keep their sanity how would so well we saw the device which he employs to keep his sanity and keep himself a sense of himself this entire world is an amalgamation of things that actually exist things that the machine randomly generates, anything from everyday items to people. And as for you, you leave no lasting impression on this world. It's like you're not even there. Okay, one last question. How do we get out? User express. Okay, and what if something goes wrong? We're working on it. Well, because the one thing that, you know, is, is a reality is you know something's going to go wrong. <laughs> the second... You see my machine, you know something's going to go wrong. I mean, that's the you know conceit of the film. So f for me, uh, the most important thing was, look, that part 
is a given. Let's not belabor that. Let's belabor the relationships. Let's let's you know invest in these people and their lives and and let the viewer let the viewer really connect with them and then want to go on this journey and then sympathize for them and cheer for them and root for them and want to be on their side because they know this is going to end badly. You see me, don't you? No, I've been trapped in here four years. Will you help me? If you want my help, you help me first. I want to find out what happened the night of the murder. I didn't do this! Something else happened that night. An incident with another man. Chasing down a random memory is a needle in a haystack. You will remain here for the rest of your life. It's time to keep up your end of the bargain. I spoke to your husband. Yeah, we wanted to sort of create this labyrinth of like, all right, if I need to get here, how do I work backwards? And that was in the writing, we kind of had to work backwards and say, how would I get out of this situation? You paint yourself into a corner and you basically say in the writing, how would you get out of it? And if it takes you long enough to figure it out, then the audience will be satisfied because they can't guess the next step. Because I think, you know, there's nothing worse than watching a film, seeing it three steps ahead and, and, and saying, oh, well, this is going to happen. And then indeed that does happen. Yeah. So um, I think one of the things that we just troubleshooted, even once Sasha got on board, is like, are we, are, are we one step ahead of the audience? All you know is my history, not me. I know myself. The memory starts to unravel. All it takes is one tiny little trigger. What are you going to do now? I'm going to do what's in my best interest. We don't have time. It is a very philosophical piece. You know, there, there are numerous themes that are uh, very universal. And that's partly what was so exciting about working on it. But it's a real talking piece. You know, you can walk out of there and there's so many uh, subjects that it, it, it triggers and so many things that it touches upon. And that's one of my favorite things. When, when you walk away from a film and it just kind of excites you about all these different uh, aspects of life that, you know, that are mysteries and, and uh, we're always trying to understand a little bit deeper. Can you see him? I need to go to one more memory. Take me! You get killed, you kill Tom!